And then Giovanni came into my life when I was in college. I made sure to get all A's that semester. I finished the semester early, prepare for whatever was coming my way. You know, I want to make sure that my child is definitely taken care of. I started a savings account right away for him. Even before he was born, I had an education savings account. All the things that a mom would do when he was born, they told me that he had some mild jaundice. Usually most babies can recover from it in a few days. They said just watch him, put him, sit him by the window. We had a big window in our rooms. You know, try and get him that light exposure that he needed because that helps your vitamin D levels. But there was nothing ever out of the ordinary that they told us about. In the beginning, I didn't know anything was wrong. Giovanni, say hi, Leo. Hi, Leo. I love you, Giovanni. Yeah! I love you, Giovanni. Nurses, even students from the local community college that come in and learn, or different colleges around the area, um, the pediatricians, or the, he's seen so many specialists and so many doctors. The thing that remained constant was his extremely low vitamin D level, extremely low. We were asked about um, our illnesses we may have had as, as children when we were young. The main thing being, when I was quite young, I was diagnosed with rickets, and I wore full leg braces on both legs until my, my bones were straightened out. I didn't think much of it at the time, but I, find, I found out in the past year, this is also a result of being vitamin D deficient. I began to realize this is part of my inherited medical history in my, in my family. They determined that it was, in the end, particularly because of um, x-rays and the lab work, they were able to determine it was metabolic bone disease run any further tests, they said, you know, follow up with an endocrinologist and follow up with an uh, orthopedist, which we did next day. The next time we came back, um, the pediatrician said to me, well, you know, did he not tell you that he was diagnosed with rickets? And I was like, no, the endocrinologist never told me. And he said, well, sometimes he thinks that he tells people whatever his diagnosis is and he just forgets or something. So there was no patient education. That's what the doctor is there for, to tell you what your diagnosis is and what steps you need to take to be able to overcome it, make yourself better, or live with it, depending on what type of disease. So they put him in the pediatric unit and them trying to get blood samples from him was so heartbreaking for me because they had to try and try and try again. And to go through that to see him, having me pricked by needles all the time, um, it was really hard to see. And um, I don't know, he's the strongest person I know. To see every, every single person that would come in that room, they would say, oh my gosh, he's so handsome. And then they would see, you know, his arm wrapped around his body and his leg. After they ran some tests, they said, well, we think that he has liver disease. And I said to them, well, isn't that a fatal type of disease, they said, yes, we want to transfer him to a hospital that's, um, you know, specializes in pediatrics. They have a pediatric unit, and they're, you know, we transfer all our patients down there that we don't know what to, you know, how to help them anymore. They closed the case because all the doctors said, you know, it's a bone disease. And then turn around and say, well, you know, we think that you abused this child, especially when they kept telling me that they didn't have all the records from the first hospital. They were treating us very disrespectfully. People were giving us looks. And I'm like, why, you know, why are they being this way? Because they were gonna kick us out of the hospital. And
every single holiday, I write him a card. I tell him I love him, tell him I miss him. And I know one day I'll give those cards to him. I don't know when it's going to be, but I know that I will. Um, and I know that he knows I love him, no matter what. I mean, I can just, even the last time I saw him, I could see the look in his eyes. He knew, he knows he knows me. I know he knows that. Every time I pray for him, I pray that he's safe, that he's happy, that he's healthy, and that he knows that I love him and I miss him. So I've learned to appreciate every single day. And the one thing that he absolutely has to know is how much I love him and how much I miss him. You know, all I wanted was help. And that's why I kept taking him to the hospital and to the doctors. Please help my son, you know? Please tell me what's wrong with him. And please help me help him to get better and healthier again. Um, so I just really want him to know that no matter what happens, I'm always gonna be there for him. I know I'll see him again. I don't know when, but if it comes to the fact that he's 18, I hope that he sees this and he finds a way to contact me, but I'm trying to keep every single point of contact open for him so that way there's no way that he can't find me again you know